Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to episode 10 of the Tommy John Show. I am, of course, your co-host, Tommy Lane. That is Johnny Mishaz, and always our head commentator, gruesome Gavin Delaney. Gents, how are we doing? How are we doing on this December 30th, the last podcast of 2020, this horrendous year? Pretty good, pretty good. Happy, uh, happy it's over. Looking forward to 2021. Going to get any worse than 2020, or are we... It's going to be hard to get worse. It would be hard, yeah. Actually, Tommy, this isn't my last podcast of 2020. I have my political podcast, um, which is <laughs> Gruesome Gavin Delaney Takes on Washington, D.C. And I have my literature podcast, which is Gruesome Shakespeare. So I'll give those a oh, listen. And, uh, but sports is my bread and butter, so I'm happy you're, to be you're, here. Your take on Othello was fantastic, Gav. Yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We, today we're looking at um, Romeo and Juliet, a classic, so make sure to watch that. I'm kidding. I will never do that ever in my life. All right. Well, it's good to know that you, you're venturing out into outside of the sports world, Gav. You're a man of many things. That's for sure. So let's get into it. But before we start, remember to, if you're watching this, smash that subscribe button, smash the like button, and, and leave comments. You know, we have a lot of people who want to see certain things on the podcast. You leave your comments on what you want to see, and we will try and cover that on the next episode of The Tommy John Show. So... It's December 30th, so you know what that means. We are approaching 2021 and the final week of the NFL season. But first, it's time to go back and look at Week 16. Yes, it's time for the Tommy John Show NFL Rundown for Week 16. So, Johnny, Gav, what a week we had in Week 16. And let's start with the Christmas game, which was the Minnesota Vikings at the New Orleans Saints. A win for the Saints will lock up their fourth straight NFC South title. Cousins and the Vikings looking to keep their playoff hopes alive. They put 33 points on the number one defense and they still lost because Alvin Kamara had a record tying day, six touchdowns. Minnesota loses to New Orleans 52 33. Their season's done. The Saints win their fourth NFC South title in a row. Then we had Tampa and Detroit the next game. When Tampa was down 17-0 a week ago at Atlanta, guys, people thought that the Bucs were done. Well, they dropped 31 points in the second half of that game, each got a win. Then they said the first half was their problem. They only play second-half football. Brady throws for 348 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions in the first half. Didn't play the second half. It was a wash, 47-7. to The Bucs clinched their first playoff appearance since 2007. The second longest drought in the NFL snap. San Fran at Arizona. Eight and six. Cardinals at the last spot in the NFC. Kyler Murray just made the Pro Bowl, so a lot of expectation of this game. But the biggest difference maker, George Kittle, made his return to the lineup for San Fran. Oh, man. Four catches, 92 yards. San Fran stunned Arizona, 20 to 12. The Cardinals are now on the outside looking in because of Trubisky and the Bears, who Sunday took down the worst team in the NFL, Gab. Your Jets are not in that position. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags were abysmal. They get destroyed and steamrolled by Trubisky, who threw two touchdowns. Still had a regular interception, but, you know, that happens with him. 41-17, to Chicago dismantles Jacksonville. Chicago's won three in a row, and now – they have the final wild card spot with a week left. Johnny's Giants at Baltimore. Daniel Jones returned to the lineup, and nothing changed. The Giants lost to the Ravens. Oh, man. The Giants are 5-10 and 10, but are not out of it because of the Washington football team failing the clinch on Sunday, who Dwayne Haskins made a start for the injured Alex Smith, and to say it didn't go good was an understatement, guys. Had under 200 yards passing, two interceptions. The Panthers, of all people, get their fifth win against Washington. And that performance was so bad by Dwayne Haskins, he got cut the next day. The NFC East will be coming down to week 17. Philly at Dallas. This game was so important because finally we could lose one team from NFC East contention. And that was, of course, the Philadelphia Eagles. Despite Deshaun Jackson getting an 81-yard touchdown, guys, Dalton Balt, 348 yards, three touchdowns. Cowboys, 37. 
to 17, and they are still in the race for the NFC East. Rams at Seattle. Well, this was probably the biggest switch game of the week because if the Rams win, they would have taken first place in the NFC West. Seattle wins. The NFC West is theirs. Goff and the Rams' offense was terrible, and I think that was just putting it lightly. They only scored nine points on the worst defense in the NFL. Jared Goff broke his thumb in the game, is out next week at Arizona, and a loss next week and a Chicago and Arizona win would knock the Rams out of the playoffs. So a huge game there. Seattle finally locks up the NFC West. Tennessee at Green Bay, Sunday Night Football in a winter wonderland. Green Bay hammering the Tennessee Titans 40 to 14. Aaron Rodgers, four touchdowns, three of them to Devontae Adams. He now is 44, and in all likelihood, guys, locked up the MVP. We head to the AFC now, and I think the game of the week, Miami at Las Vegas. A loss for the Raiders would have, well, they, they're eliminated if they lose. The Dolphins, a loss would knock them out of the playoffs. So Tua started the game, wasn't going so hot. Brian Flores made the switch to you-know-who, Ryan, Fitzmagic, Fitzpatrick. The rest is history. Down two points with 19 seconds left, no timeouts. Surely the game's over. Well, Fitzmagic happened. He completed a 34-yard pass with his helmet getting ripped off his damn head. 15 yards added to the reception, and unbelievable. 44-yard field goal as the clock expires. Miami stunned the Raiders, 26-25. Raider season is done. The Dolphins are clinging on to that last playoff spot. And what could have been the most surprising game of the day, Atlanta at Kansas City. The same goes, right? When Mahomes has a bad day, you'll win the game, right? Wrong. Mahomes had a lackluster day. Scored only seven points in the first half, had an interception, almost the second one that would have ended the game, but ultimately, like he does, Pat Mahomes found Demarcus Robinson for a touchdown with under two minutes left. Falcons getting field goal range with the Pro Bowl kicker, and he misses from short range. Chiefs 17, Falcons 14. They lock up the number one seed in the AFC, and that coveted first round bye. There's only one now in each conference, and the AFCs belongs to the reigning defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Indianapolis at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers were 11-0 three weeks ago. Three weeks later, they're 11-3. Three losses in a row. They're falling out of playoff contention. They were down 24-7 late in the third quarter, but Big Ben had enough of that. They came back from 17 down, scoring on three out of four drives. The Steelers knock off Phillip Rivers and the Colts 28 to 24. Now with the Colts lost, they are outside of the playoff picture. We have a lot of teams at 10 and 5. The head to heads go against Indianapolis. They're on the outside looking in with a week left in the season. Cleveland at Gavs Jets. The Browns were looking to end a 17, yes, a 17 year playoff drought Sunday against the one win New York football Jets. However, all of the Browns starting wide receivers were out due to COVID-19. Surely they can't lose to the Jets. Wrong. The Jets take down Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns in a fantastic football game, actually, that came down to the wire. The difference maker, Baker Mayfield, had two fumbles at the end of the game. Yes, two fumbles on two straight drives. The Jets get their second win of the year, and because of that, the Jacksonville Jaguars have locked up the number one pick in the draft, and Trevor Lawrence will be a Jacksonville Jaguar in about four months' time. Cincinnati and Houston, this game had zero impact on the NFL whatsoever, just in draft order. Brandon Allen, Joe Burrow, who, right? 371, two touchdown passes. Cincinnati 37 to 31 over the Houston Texans, and if you all saw J.J. Watt, not happy about that. Denver at the Chargers, another nothing, block game. Herbert out to his Drew Locke, no surprise there, 19-16. to 16. The Chargers are on a roll, three wins in a row to end off the year, and maybe this little run can keep Anthony Lynch job. The Monday night game, my Patriots hosting the Buffalo Bills. The Patriots haven't lost to the same team twice in a season since, yes, 2000, 
same year I was born. That changed Monday night. Josh Allen and the Bills steamrolled Belichick's Patriots 38-9. to Diggs had over 140 receiving yards, three touchdowns. The Bills, the AFC East champions, sit at 12-3, and second seed in the AFC. The Patriots fall to 6-9, and making it their first losing season since 2000 when Drew Bledsoe was their starting quarterback. So that was week 16. We'll look at the playoff picture right now in the NFC. The Packers lead the way at 12-3. and three. If they win against Chicago at Soldier Field, they'll be at 13-3 and three and will lock up the number one seed and the coveted bye. And the road to Tampa would go through Green Bay, Wisconsin. New Orleans, Seattle are the two and three seeds. That can change depending on how those go. But if it ended now, New Orleans would be the two. Seattle would be the three. We come to Johnny's NFC East where it's Washington right now at six and nine. A win for them on Sunday night will clinch the division with a seven and nine record. A loss would eliminate them. And the winner of the Dallas and New York football giant game would win the NFC East and host a playoff game. We go to the five seed as we look at the wild cards. Tampa at 10 and five. The Rams at nine and six. The Bears holding on to that final playoff spot at eight and seven. They got a tough task, though. The number one seed, Green Bay Packers coming into town. Arizona, the last team at eight and seven on the outside looking in. The AFC, like I said, Kansas City clinches number one seed. You will not see a lot of their starters on Sunday. Andy Reid coming out saying that Patrick Mahomes will rest, and I believe Chad Haney will get the start for the Chiefs. They're at 14-1. and one. Buffalo, the next at 12-3. and three. Pittsburgh at 12-3. and three. The Titans at 10-5. and five. That's how the division leaders look now. Wild card, Miami, Baltimore, Cleveland, all at 10-5. and five. Indianapolis also at 10-5 and five on the outside looking in. A loss by any of those teams and a win by Indianapolis will put Rivers and the Colts into playoff, into the playoffs. So I'm almost out of breath. Gents, what, what do we think? What do we think about what happened on Sunday and the playoff pictures? Johnny, what was your overall take on week 16 in the National Football League? Uh, I think it was a solid overall week. I think, uh, you know, a lot of what we expected to happen happened. You know, um, I, I don't think there was much – Anything really surprising, honestly. I, I feel like it was, uh, I don't know if you would disagree with me there, Tommy, but I think one of the things that I answered is that throughout this whole season has been a storyline of, you know, how, how good is Tom Brady? Is it his, is he the better player? Or is Bill Belichick the reason for their success, right? And uh, I think it's safe to say now that we all know that Tom Brady is not a system quarterback. <laughs> and that he is the reason for the New England success over the past 20 years, as Tommy mentioned before. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't believe it took that long, to be honest. You know, um, people can bring up COVID all they want, right? Oh, Dante Hightower opted out. Patrick Chung opted out. Every, I know everyone on the planet opted out for New England, right? That's the big excuse now. But they, they, they I can't even, I'm diehard Pats fan. I couldn't watch that on Monday. I was... That was a pathetic performance. And what's the main difference from this team? It's that Cam Newton is not Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, the receivers are the same, except they added Demir Bird, who did drop a touchdown pass, but that's neither – what gathers neither there nor here. Um, what, what I'm surprised about is how more people are – instead of giving Tom Brady his due – are finding ways out to Bill Belichick, give him a pass almost. But that was that was a pathetic display. And you know Buffalo was going, they wanted, they've been humiliated by that franchise over the last 20 years. You look at Brady and Belichick's numbers against the Buffalo Bills, it is a disaster. They hadn't beat New England twice in the same year since 99. So they were looking to do that. And, and I, I think if Allen and Diggs run the whole game, they would have scored 50. They didn't play in the fourth quarter. I, I think, honestly, I thought they were going to left them in. I thought they were going to run the score up as much as they could. I thought they were going to try to blow you guys out, you know, 60 to 9. 
<laughs> but didn't end up happening that way. They took mercy, uh, thankfully for you guys, at least. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, I think another important game was the Dolphins Raiders. I think Dolphins, if they didn't win that game, they'd be out, I believe. Yeah, that would have been tough going to Buffalo. And that, and that, that game brings a question, you know, do, does Miami have faith in Tua? Because when it, when it came down to it, they didn't, right? They took him out. Okay, let's I want I want to talk about this, guys. So Tua obviously was the fifth overall pick in the draft, had an amazing career at Alabama, but he had injury problems, right? Like the hip. You know, even before that, he was always injured. In the SEC championship game two years ago against Georgia, he had to be taken out. And Jalen Hurts came in and came in and finished the game for Alabama. So that's always been an issue. But I I think it's fair to say our expectations for Miami wasn't the playoffs this year. No. He was picked fifth overall to him. So there's an expectation. You look what Herbert's doing at six. He went six, and Herbert was going to win rookie of the year probably. Well, with a team like with Miami, you know, sorry to cut you off, but with a team like Miami, looking back at last year, anything's better than last year, you know. So clearly they're expecting, you know, some improvement with one of the best quarterbacks um, that was in the draft last year. So hopefully, and I think he did. I think he he didn't, maybe he didn't play as much as he had hoped. Um, I'm sure he would have liked to have started straight straight uh, in week one, but that's just not how football mm-hmm. works. You know, you got to groom these guys. You got to get them ready. Um, and yeah, sorry to cut you off, Tommy. Go ahead. No, 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 not at all. So, Johnny, I was going to ask you about this. Tua went fifth, but Fitzmagic was balling. Uh, we love it. We call him Fitzmagic. Fitzmagic was balling. They went to San Fran. They won that game. They, they were just sky high on their confidence. They remember they beat up on the Rams at home. They were a fantastic football team. Then Brian Flores made the switch to Tua. And Tua's had his moments where he's looked sensational, but he's also had his moments like on Saturday where they're in a close game and he didn't think he could pull it off for them, puts in Fitzpatrick, and they win the football game. You know, the thing about Tua and Fitzpatrick is, you know, I think Tua, when it started, got his first, I don't think it was his first start, but I think they put him, uh, they benched Fitzmagic, I think week five or something. I think that was, I think they were two. Yeah, that range, week five to seven. I think they were two and two and they benched him. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think he uh, he deserves to be benched. I think Fitzmagic should have been the start of the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Tua, you know, if you want to win, you don't don't want to play your rookie quarterback, you know, especially if they make the playoffs, he's not starting, right? Fitzmagic is going to be starting. I like Tua. I think he's a solid player. I think uh, I think he should have waited the whole year behind uh, Fitzpatrick. You know, mm-hmm. learn, a little, learn a little bit behind a veteran quarterback. The thing is, it's kind of like I don't like to do parallels in the NFL. Well, I do, but I don't think it's always warranted sometimes because not every quarterback is put in the same spot. Um, not every situation is the same. But this kind of reminds me of the Eagles a few years back when they had Foles and Wentz. Wentz is the guy they picked second overall. They want him to be the face of their franchise. And they were going to give him the huge contract. They they, They wanted a face of their franchise. And Wentz is a tall, strong, can, and very marketable kid for their franchise. Um... When he got hurt, he was playing amazing, right? And then he got hurt. And then Foles leads him to the Super Bowl. He won the Super Bowl MVP, Foles. The next year, when uh, Wentz came back, it just something wasn't clicking. And it was almost at some point the organization was reluctant to put in Foles. But then they said Wentz had an injury, whatever, whatever. Foles comes in. They were out of a playoff spot, like dead in the water. Foles brings them back. They make the playoffs. They win. You remember at the double doink game in Chicago. Then they go to New Orleans. And if Alshon Jeffrey or Aguilar, forget which one, if he actually had hands, they catch it. They probably win at New Orleans. It doesn't get an interception. It bounced right off his hands and got intercepted. So the main issue, I believe, is that the team plays for a certain guy and they don't play for another guy. You looked at Philly when Foles was in the game. And even with Hurts, they, it's like when Wentz is out of there, they're a new team. They're, like, there must be something in the locker room that Foles did that really got the team going. Because if you look, the only change they made in their roster 
was putting Nick Foles in, and the team took off. And you look at Miami, they were dead in the water against the Raiders on Saturday. They make the switch to Fitzpatrick, and the team, like, they lit up. So I don't know if that this – it might be a bit of a different – circumstances but you have a guy who you drafted high and you see a kid who Herbert's balling in Los Angeles another out of a playoff spot but still he's throwing for 300 yards every game so they kind of, I felt like that kind of forced them into playing Tua and it may hamper his future you look at Carson Wentz now and he's lucky if he's going to get another starting job in the league right <clears throat> my take on that Tommy is that like you know if you're going to draft a quarterback high I always advocate this, to benching him for a year. I always think the best thing to do because, you know, when you switch in a quarterback, like you're saying, you know, sometimes they don't mesh properly. The wide receivers, there's, there's no, they don't connect. You know, there's a learning curve they have to get over. They have to learn the playbook, right? So if you sit them for that year, it gives them the chance to, you know, get to know the wide receivers, get to know the offense, the playbook, and it gives them a chance to learn. I, if, you know, if you're going to – I think that's why if they were to play to it this year, they should have just thrown them in at the beginning of week one, you know, and let them play the whole season. Forget about winning or losing, right? But now that they put magic in, or if it's magic, excuse me, I just don't see how they can. I don't think they should have started two at all. You know, I should think they left them on the bench, let them develop more. Mm -hmm. I think that's always the best best thing to do when the young quarterbacks. I, I agree with you, Johnny. In, in, a, in a sense, it kind of lights a fire under his, his you know what, because he knows right. what it's like to, to, to be sitting on, on the bench on Sunday, you know, and that's not a good feeling no matter who you are. So he knows, okay, I don't want to feel that ever again. So after this season, I'm going to work my tush off to, to, to start every given Sunday. Um, and I think that, like, that's why it's, so, it's smart not only for, 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 for the team, but it's smart for, for the longevity of the, uh, of the quarterback's career because heaven forbid he goes out there and he does something dumb, gets injured right away, you know, first season. So I think that's, it's definitely a good thing to do. It may seem at, at, from afar that it's kind of wasting your draft pick just having him sit on the bench and marinate. But, I mean, it, the return that you could get off something like that is just is unmeasurable. So, well, I think the perfect example is Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he was drafted 10th overall. They had Alex Smith in there, and they let him sit one year. They were originally going to do him two years, but they wanted him to sit one year, and Andy Reid knew it was going to be a project. He sits under that one year, and Mahomes said, "I'm he's ten times the player just from sitting and learning from Alex Smith that entire year." And Alex Smith, similar to Ryan Fitzpatrick, is a veteran. He's played. He's been in different situations. He's played in big games. Um, so uh, Patrick Mahomes learned a lot from Alex Smith, and I feel like they should have, no matter how good their chances would have been this year, your expectations were to maybe go 500. With Fitzpatrick, they caught something, lightning in a bottle, and they made the switch to Tua, I think, too prematurely. You know he's had injury history. He doesn't look 100% right, if you ask me, compared to what he did at Alabama. So I feel like if you – he said – Brian Flores said this week Tua's playing Sunday. I'm not sure. I think this has to be Fitzpatrick's team for this week, and if they get into the playoffs – the guy through the playoffs. And trust me, Tua will learn more from studying under Ryan Fitzpatrick in those two key games than being out there, being nervous, making bad decisions, doubt creeps in. You can do all the studying you want, right, under after the fact, but it's still going to be in your head. And I feel like he's too young to be put into that situation. And Fitzpatrick's the perfect quarterback to be in that situation for the Miami Dolphins. I mean, Tua's been there – what he's a rookie putting him into that situation wouldn't wouldn't be good i feel like joe burrow can handle it because it it's feels like he's made for the big moment i don't know if Tua right now is the not saying the guy but for this season what i've seen you have to go with it's magic forward johnny yeah and another thing about you know benching out your young quarterbacks is that it gives them like a sense of like accomplishment and like it makes them earn it you know mm -hmm. you're not, you have quarterbacks who don't earn anything you just you know you draft them high and think okay yeah i'll be a starter or whatever i already know i'm gonna start and you got things like Dwayne Haskin happening you know he goes to strip club he has josh rosen josh rosen exactly stuff like that you know you want them to you want them to earn the spot you know you don't want to just give it to them mm -hmm. I right it. and you see yeah i got I was going to say it's different for the first overall pick, like you said with Joe Burrow, because usually you're drafting a guy he knows what he knows what he's walking into. 
Um, mm-hmm. And he knows he's mostly – so he kind, he kind of has a whole season to, to get in the mind frame of becoming a starting quarterback and to work on that. Um, and also, that's what everyone expects. You know, it, that you have nothing to lose as the team that has the first overall pick. So why not mix things up a little bit with the quarterback? Um, but when it comes to something a little – when they wanted to pick a little later on in the draft, it's, it's so much better. Maybe like the Dolphins didn't – when they threw Tua in late in the game versus the Jets – that's okay. You know, you still wanted to get him, give him some reps. Um, but when it comes to starting, I think you should just let him, let him marinate with the team on, on the practice field and on the bench before throwing him to the wolves. I totally agree. I totally agree. So we'll be watching Tua starting the game. We'll see if Fitzpatrick comes in and uh, I hope for Fitz, Fitzpatrick's earned it. He's been around. He's been in the league for a long time. I don't know if he's ever started a playoff game. I'm not 100% sure on that. He probably has. Honestly. He probably has, but I, I just slipped my mind right now. The AFC is jam-packed, though. Like you said, Miami, Baltimore at 10-5, and five, Cleveland at 10-5, and five, Indianapolis at 10-5. and five. The Titans lead in the NFC South at 10-5. and five. All the, One of those teams is going to miss the playoffs. Who do we think it's going to be? Indy, Tennessee, Miami, Baltimore, Cleveland, Johnny. Out of those, who are going to be the ones left out come the second week of January? I think Cleveland. That? I think Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one. Johnny, I agreed with you there. I think I think Cleveland, the way they played against the Jets, I don't think they're okay, going to – That wasn't the Browns. That wasn't the Browns. Well, just because the whole season. starting receivers, all the receivers are gone. They, got, they still have Baker Mayfield. They still have the running back. Still have their offensive, defensive line. How the yeah, Jets? They didn't have Landry. They didn't have Peoples Jones, whatever his name is. They didn't have Higgins. They didn't have any of those guys. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That was a bad example, but still. No, 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 no. I'm not saying bad example. I'm saying. I don't think they're. I don't. They're I don't the see them. Team. I don't see them making the playoffs. But I mean, they are playing the Steelers, who haven't exactly been playing the best football. Looking at it, it's going to be closer than we had thought. Um, but you know what? I, I still don't. Out of all the teams that you mentioned, Tommy, there, I don't think Cle- – I think Cleveland is the, one, the odd one out. I don't think they'll be playing. I, I, think, I think Cleveland's going to get in. Who do you I have? think Pittsburgh's going to play their guys for a half and say we need a break. They've clinched the, the playoff spot. Exactly. Like they- well, Mason Rudolph's starting. So. Mason Rudolph's starting? He is, yeah. Then why? And then Cleveland's going to win that game. You've seen Mason Rudolph play. If Mason Rudolph's starting, then I'm picking the Browns to win that game. I say, I say uh, Miami's going to miss out in the playoffs. Yeah, okay. So Steelers are resting Roethlisberger per Sportsnet. Um, Rudolph will be starting. That'll be his first time playing since the incident uh, occurred last year between him and Miles Garrett, mm. which we all know what happened there. Is that going to reoccur? I freaking hope not, but I also freaking hope so. He was spotted a few months ago with Hannah Ann from the Bachelor, so who knows? Maybe he's a new guy. Maybe he's a new guy. Tommy, like you said, who do you think is going to be the one? Um... I think I think Miami is the one. My weak link, I just – if, if two is starting, then, then I'm not sure. I'm really not sure if Tua's starting. I don't know if I trust him enough uh, to get the win. But if it's Patrick starting, you better believe I like Miami in that football game. It's all depend. I feel like if Indy gets, I feel like Baltimore plays the Bengals, eh? So I feel like they'll win and be in. Yeah, uh, I, I see them in. I, I think Miami's the weak link out of all those teams. I really do. But if, like you said, if Fitzpatrick got the nod I would like them so I'm gonna say Miami falls out of the playoffs right now but again if Buffalo it all depends week 17's like who knows because some team some players play a half some players don't play at all so um yeah I'm gonna say Miami out of those teams Miami's is the weakest link I'm not saying who's gonna miss I say out of all those teams out of Tennessee Miami Baltimore Cleveland Indianapolis Miami's the weakest team that's all what I've seen on paper, on what I've seen with my two eyes, my 2020 eyes. They've been the weakest teams. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you at all. At first, I thought I agreed with Johnny, but after hearing your analysis. Well, Johnny um, said the Browns, right? Johnny said the Browns. I initially agreed with him just looking at who they're playing. But 
you look at Mason Rudolph starting, you look at the way the Steelers have been playing recently. Um, there's a lot of things to, to consider. Um, and if the Browns are back to, they're going to, they're going to play their guys uh, if they can, because of COVID they're going to play their hot shots because this is do or die for them. Not so much pressure on the Steelers and a lot of pressure on the Dolphins. But like you said, if they're starting to, I don't know, man, if they're starting Fitzpatrick, I think they're, they're in the playoffs. So, I mean, Nothing more for us to say other than I saw Johnny shaking his head. I, was just saying, I think you guys are forgetting the biggest factor here is that this is the Cleveland Browns. Okay, this is not a good football team. All right, You're playing the Steelers. Who cares if they have Mason Rudolph? They lost him when they played Mason Rudolph started like last year. That was a couple times the Steelers. I don't think they're. I think there's no chance they win this game. Do you want you want to do a bet on something? Like I wear like a I wear like a giant hat or something. We'll do a bet. Do you want you say Cleveland's gonna miss out? Yeah, hundred percent. I say uh, I say not. I bet the farm on if I could. Is that, wait, is the bet whether or not Cleveland's gonna make it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what do you want to do? Well, well, do I have to wear what Yankees or do we keep it football? We'll do the Giants for the sake of uh, yeah. I'll do I'll do the hat. I'll wear I'll wear a Giants hat. I don't have a Giants hat, but I've got one off. A lot of them. Right. And if your hands, what, what, you wear a Pats hat? Yeah, I don't have a Pats hat, but I will. I'll, do it. I'll drop one off. Okay, I think Cleveland, Cleveland are going to make the playoffs. You're saying Cleveland are not. You can take the field because I think it's guaranteed Cleveland loses this game. So, all right. So, all right. Perfect. So, I have Giants, Giants hat, Cleveland may miss his playoffs. Yep. And you got a Pats hat if the Browns make the playoffs. Yes, sir. All right. I can tell. Uh, okay. All right. Sweet. So that's what we think for the AFC right now. Who's going to make it? We all think Kansas City. Kansas City, that's my hot take. Kansas City won't make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Super Bowl, okay. I picked Tennessee. I picked Buffalo or Tennessee a week ago. I forget which one I did. After last week, after this week, Buffalo. I'm joking. Uh, I said either Buffalo or Tennessee would knock off the Chiefs. So, and if you look at our pre, if you look at my pre turn, if we look at in the June, I said Buffalo would give Kansas City a run for their money when they got Stefan Diggs. I think I remember you do saying that. I remember you saying Tennessee because they got that good run, run game. Kansas City, they are limping to the finish. All in this seven-game win streak, their average win, their average margin of victory is under four points. That's the thing with the Chiefs; they've been winning. But you look at last week against the Falcons. They should have lost that game. They should have lost that game. They should have lost that game. So that's not what you like to see. And but you told me in June, right after Patrick Mahomes signed that five hundred million dollar contract, you tell me that, and I say you have lost your mind. But you I don't that, have a problem with the contract. But. You tell me that now, and then now I'm like, okay, well, you see, like, they've been winning, but by the skin of their teeth, and the way the Bills have been playing and beating up on teams as they go through, the way Derrick Henry has been running, it's... It was, it was the same thing with Baltimore last year, Gav. Baltimore won, like, 14, wherever, 12 in a row, heading into the playoffs. They rested their guys week 17. They had a week off the next week. They go against a Tennessee team that was playing playoff football for the last two months, just came off a win at New England and ended the Brady Belichick era. And they were two, like at least a 10 point favorite. I said Tennessee was going to win. Baltimore has been too shaky. They've had two weeks off. Tennessee is on fire right now. I think that could happen to Kansas City because they have been limping to the finish. It's not like they played a great team last week. Atlanta is awful. And, and, and Atlanta. Terrell had the interception in the end zone, and he dropped it. And you can't do that against Kansas City. You look at so many different plays happened. And what are the odds the best kicker, the most accurate kicker in football? Was it Koo, his name is? The boy Koo. Yeah. He's made everything. And he has like a 30 – he has like a 40-yard field goal, and he misses it. Missed the most important one. It was yeah. like a chip shot. It was a chip. Yeah, and he good. misses it. The Pro Bowl kicker misses from under 50 yards. That never happens. I think it's safe to say that if the – so Kansas City, yeah, they're going to – but if, let's say, a team like the Bills or uh, the Titans put up well, – like what we saw last year with the tight, oh, with the uh, Texans, you know, like a, an early deficit, an early, a big lead, Kansas City doesn't come back from that this year, I don't think. If, it, if it's against one of those teams, I don't see them coming back the way they've been playing recently. 
the, the thing is with that, if they fall, you can't fall behind to a Tennessee team because they're just going to give Derrick Henry the ball. And yeah. in cold weather, you ain't going to stop them this time of year. You ain't going to stop them. So, and when you like, it's simple football. You run the ball, Mahomes is on the sidelines because that clock is getting eaten up. So, the, I think what, especially what I saw on Sunday, I don't say the Chiefs are frauds because they just won the Super Bowl last year, but I find everyone's, they're the, I think they're, everyone loves them too much and they win barely. They out, I couldn't believe that watching the Tampa Bay game. How they were up. They, it was like they they annihilated them in the first quarter, and they let Tampa come back. Brady made it a three point game with like five minutes left. So even it's only it's they can have a lead. They even they can have a lead, right? And you've seen leads on them get cut down from passing offenses. So I feel like Buffalo can keep up with them scoring the ball, and I feel like. Tennessee can run all over them, especially with the way Kansas City's run defense has looked in the last few months, Johnny. I agree. Yeah, Ken, yeah Kansas City, they've been, they've been begging people to run the ball against them all season. Um, I, I just, I, the one thing between Kansas City is that they have so many weapons, you know, like even like Patty throws to Tyreek. If Tyreek's not open, he's got Kelsey. If Kelsey's not open, he's got Savvy. If Savvy's not open, he's got Clyde. There's just there's so many weapons on that team. I just I can't see even if they take a big uh, even if they take a big deficit early, I can I can still see them coming back with Patrick Mahomes in his arm. I think I think it's entirely. But, I, I, that's my one fear is that if maybe he's just gotten tired. They had a long time since the bye. I don't know. Patrick Mahomes with two weeks off. You know who knows. But we saw what it did to Lamar Jackson in the playoffs last year different, and different styles of quarterback you know Lamar is not as, not as much of a thrower as much of a runner that's very true I'm not I don't want to compare Mahomes and Lamar Jackson they're not even on the same planet but it's still I, I think they're not as good as everyone says they are wins are wins so if you keep winning you're gonna get that's true up. that's true but, but you, look, you look at a team like Green Bay what they did to oh yeah. no, Green Bay yeah I'm not even – I don't even think Green Bay is going to win the NFC, but I just look – As of now, as of now, Green Bay plays Kansas City. You know, it's uh, it's a good game. Well, I think Rodgers lights them up. Yeah. So 50 to 45 is not possible. After, hey, after I saw Saturday, I tell you what, I think Tampa is going to the Super Bowl. Because they beat up on Detroit? Did you see – did you watch? Did you watch? They did that, Johnny. They did that in a half. In a in a half, in a half, they did it in a half. Oh, it is still just Detroit. Man. It's not so like they did it. that 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 deep that awful Atlanta defense that Mahomes couldn't put twenty points on. Brady threw for over three hundred yards and put thirty one points in a half against that defense. The next week at home, Brady was on the road at Atlanta when he did that. Mahomes got him at home and he laid an egg and they barely won. So you can't, like, it's proof's in the pudding, Johnny. When Kansas City played Atlanta this week, Atlanta's defense looked phenomenal, did it not? It looked great. And that defense that played Brady a week ago in the second half allowed Brady to throw for, like, 320 and two touchdowns, no picks, and they put 31 points in a half. Well, Brady's going to see the defense again this week. So we'll have a better we'll have a better, better sign after this week. But they played him a week ago. This is so they went – Atlanta had Tampa, Kansas City, Tampa. That's not a friendly stretch, but they they played them well in the first half. In the second half, Brady lit them up. And I'm telling you right now, Antonio Brown looks great. Mike Evans looks phenomenal. Chris Godwin. You talk about weapons. You know, they're getting Fournette involved, McCoy, Gronk. I mean, no one in the NFC scares me. No one. This, I seen scare me, Tommy, if I were you. But you know what the Saints do in the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. That's you true. What was that, Kev? I was going to say, like, it's kind of like the opposite of what we're, what we're talking about with Kansas City, you know? Like, Kansas City scrapes by, and as we look at last year, they always kind of, with their weapons, they always find a way to make it happen. Saints, on the other hand, Kind of the opposite. I mean, they beat up on teams all the way up until week 17, and then week seven, and then playoffs come along, 
And they always end up getting screwed over, whether it be some call or just a, a lucky catch or whatever. They always end up getting screwed over. But, you know, football doesn't care about feelings. So they get screwed over. It doesn't matter if, uh, if it, it, whatever happens. What, all that matters is whether you get an, a W or an L in the playoffs. And unfortunately, the Saints have a very hard time getting that W as of, as of recent scores. Does anyone want that? Does anyone want Tampa and the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl? Um, doubt this guy. Doubt Tom Brady in January and February. Him. You'll see what happens. Doubt Tom Brady in January and February. I'm not doubting him. I'm just saying I haven't seen enough yet to be oh, able to man. put my money where my mouth is. He has six Super Bowls. No. What, this, more, what this, more do you need from this, this guy? Year, this year. I'm not going to. Yeah, he has the best weapons I've ever seen in his career. He's going to – the fact he missed the Pro Bowl was fraudulent, how Kyler Murray made it over him. Brady is fourth in passing yards, third in touchdowns. He has a better record than Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's going to miss the playoffs probably, and we put this guy – it's just unbelievable. The Pro Bowl's and, a joke anyway, man. Pro Bowl, yeah. yeah. It's a joke. You remember all the like – Johnny showed me the memes. It's like, oh, uh, Robinson on the Jags, a third in rushing yards. Surely he'll make the Pro Bowl. Does it make the Pro Bowl? Evan Ingram, he's had an awful time. Surely he won't make the Pro Bowl. <laughs> when it comes out to vote. Detroit had like four Pro Bowlers or something like that. That's <laughs> ridiculous. The, the Ravens had the most Pro Bowlers, and they're not even clinching the playoffs yet. Oh, what, is, what is the metric for making Pro Bowls? It's a popularity contest. That's literally what it is. It's how many, how many fans vote your name. Regardless yeah, it's, of your it's unbelievable. But it's... It wouldn't surprise me if Aaron Rodgers didn't make the Pro Bowl this year. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But I think I, – I, how can you doubt this man with these weapons this time of year? It's like he gets bored in the regular season, and then December he turns it on. A lot of people hate Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Why do they hate him? It's a great story. It is a great story, but people don't like it. It should be a story for kids growing up. He's a six-round draft pick. He got passed over at Michigan a bunch of times. He wins the starting job. They win the Orange Bowl, by the way. He goes he, – he works his tail off. He wasn't going to get it. probably wasn't going to get a shot. When he got his shot, he took it, and he ran with it, became the best football player ever. That's a story to tell your kids how to never give up, work hard. But in this society, everyone's jealous because yes. they yes. can't get any. That should – they should – I don't get it. People like they do the same thing with every like with every great story I see. People like even the Baker Mayfield story, and I know Gav hates Baker Mayfield. That's a great story. He walked on at Texas Tech, won the starting job. My dream school is Oklahoma. He transfers to Oklahoma, walks on, wins the starting job, wins the Heisman, becomes number one pick. That's an amazing story. But we hate Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Johnny, you had a point. I, yeah, I should have really put a question. At what point do this, in this children's story about Tom Brady, do they hear about, like, the cheating and all that stuff? When did he cheat? It was Spygate wasn't him. Spygate wasn't him. And what? science was proven okay, well, this is the cold this is, weather and the wet, like they do to your car tires, air pressure. That was a fraud. And what happened when, uh, after they suspended Tom Brady? He wins the Super Bowl. What happens when he loses a big game and the other quarterback goes to shake his hand and he just yeah, walks away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jared Goff was on the other side of the field when that happened, and yeah. you knew it. <laughs> this, is, this is a very tough He's argument. Not a You're coming from it's coronavirus, exactly. It's coming. It, this is a diehard Pats fan versus a Jets fan and a Giants fan. So we're not going to go asking to respect greatness, and what you're doing now is disrespecting. No, I said, right. don't discount what he does this time of year. That's what I said. I just want to make sure the children's story has it's fully encompasses his career. I want to make sure nothing's left out. Johnny, what did I say before? And, and, he, and he marries the most popular supermodel of all time. The, the cherry on top. She's richer than him. Johnny, what did I say? What did I say before? People hate him, but... Respect him. You respect him. Yeah, People you respect him. him. And yeah. that respect comes no, from... No, they the don't. They don't. I guarantee you they do. Coming from a Tom Brady hater myself, a former Tom Brady hater, uh, a former perspective because they see like the story you say, the the, the crybaby story. Oh, he got drafted 199th overall, and then he came back and won six Super Bowls. That's where that respect comes from. The hatred comes from him winning those six Super Bowls 
over people, over diehard Falcons fans, over diehard, you name it. I could be here all day telling you the amount of hearts that Tom Brady's broken. Except Johnny's heart, eh? I was just about to say, you can't say Johnny's heart. Johnny's a lucky man right now. So. Twice. Twice. Yeah, all I'm saying is people respect him. If Welker they, caught that ball, Johnny, it was game over. <laughs> but he, but he, he caught I still remember that. In, like, grade five, when he dropped the ball, I'm like, Johnny's going <laughs> to abuse me tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, anyway. Three Chester Super Bowls Hill. later, I can't live that down, Johnny. Yeah, so people respect him, but they hate him. That's the thing. And it's it's going to be like that forever. So. No, I'm asking. I'm saying for the, my question was. Yeah, what was you your question? You're not buying the Tampa. You said you weren't buying the Tampa hype. And I said, why? Touching it back to uh, why people chose, you know, why people choose uh, Bill Belichick over Tom Brady in terms of who was – more powerful and that just stems down to people hate Tom Brady that was I was gonna say that before but I never got the chance. amen amen and the people who say it's still Tom Brady now after Monday night was the cherry on top yeah I agree that was that was that was ugly and yeah. and Tom uh, Brady was for sure at home eating his avocado ice cream loving every laughing his ass of off. that game eh laughing his ass off I guarantee it was he was he just like he was just like tears of joy. Dad, why are you crying? No reason. He made out with his son. But anyway, <laughs> anyway Tommy, I like to, to reiterate. Um, it's you know I haven't I can't say that I've watched and studied too much of the Buccaneers this year, so it's hard for me to make a bet right now and say, oh, they're going to make the playoffs or they're not going to make the playoffs. They if I were to tell you, no, no, not the playoffs, the Super Bowl. Sorry. Oh Super yeah. Bowl. Um. If I, you know, I would probably say there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of sharks in the water, a lot of sharks in the water and a lot of people, but with the weapons Tom Brady has around him right now, he could defeat those sharks. Um, but it's going to be interesting. All I can tell you right now is it's going to be interesting. I say that a lot. It's going to be interesting, but that's, I mean, I don't lie. I don't lie, man. Tom Brady. I just, how can you doubt this guy in January? I can't until it's proven otherwise. It's just it's like Jordan, Jordan with the ball with 30 seconds left. Do you know what's going to happen? January with these weapons, the way they've looked the last two weeks, you know what's going to happen. A barring injury, if like Evans and Godwin go down, then that's not the same team. If, if the Bucks, if they want to win the Super Bowl, they need Tom Brady to come out and play his ass off every week. That's true. They need He's the best done that the last two halves. I won't even say two games, two halves. Yeah, well, two halves. Keep going. You're going to keep it going now. Isn't two halves like one game? No, because no, because he didn't play the second half of Saturday's game because it was oh, okay. out, and the first half of Atlanta wasn't so not so good. But so yeah, like you can say about every team. Every team is going to need Packers are going to need the best Aaron Rodgers has ever been. They're going to yeah. need the best Drew Brees. And well, you know you're not going to get the best Drew Brees. He hasn't been good. And like even on Saturday, he wasn't that good. You look at his numbers. It was Camara. Who, he was sensational. Well, if he plays like that, he, the scenes are going to be hard to me. I don't know if he scores six touchdowns in a game again, but that, that's happened one other time in NFL history. But, but who do you like in the NFC? Last week, Gav said Green Bay. I'm assuming he's going to stick with Green Bay. Johnny, you're still sticking with New Orleans? Yeah, I like New Orleans a lot. All right. No one really can Seattle. Eh? I'm not buying Seattle either. Yeah, they don't have a secondary, man. It's, it's too weak their defense. Gav's like, excellent. Take that, Jamal Adams. Yeah. How dare you want to leave our two and deep? Thank you for the beautiful first round pick. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do for our draft show. We're gonna spend a lot of time on your Jets, Gav, in April. You know what? Just to just to touch up on it really quickly. I know I have 30 seconds. A lot of yeah, <laughs> Chef there, come on. Um, a lot of people are you know, a lot of people it must be sour. A lot of Jets fans are probably a little sour that, you know, we're not getting Trevor Lawrence. But when you look back at it. Makes sense. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Sam Darnold, these past couple weeks, not even just these past couple weeks. I mean, obviously, 2-10 and 10 doesn't really say much for him. But with what he's had, with the terrible weapons he's had, he, mm -hmm. he's had a bit of injury. It's, you know, he's he's played some decent football in some aspects. I'm not – don't worry. I'm not generalizing. He's, it's been a pretty shit season for everyone. With Sam Darnold, there's a lot of he's, – he's a couple months younger than Joe Burrow. You know, so he's still a very young quarterback. There's still a ton of potential, and we continue to see that each week. So the fact that we're not getting, going to be getting Trevor Lawrence is, you know, it's unfortunate because guys like Trevor Lawrence don't come around every year. But 
it's not devastating because with the we have like I don't know how many we have a bunch of picks. We I think we have five picks in the first ninety picks or whatever. Um, but yeah, we have plenty of room, plenty of potential to get guys to get weapons for Sam Darnold to continue to grow with. We're not going to win the Super Bowl next year or the year after that. But I'm saying the year after that, anywhere but the year after that or the. Okay. <laughs> But um, we'll be beating the Pats next year. I guarantee you that. Oh, you're beating the Pats on oh, Sunday. Oh, the Pats on Sunday, yeah. So, no. no all I'm going to is, limb, Gaff. <laughs> thanks, boys. All I'm saying is, um, you know, things are going to be – things are looking up for the Jets, despite not getting the first overall pick. So. I'm, that's all I have I'm to rooting, I'm rooting for you, Gav. I'm rooting for you because, you know, <laughs> to go through what you've gone through is, is tough. Obviously, we are looking forward to the NFC playoffs taking place. Next week on the podcast, we will do our NFL playoff bracket challenge where we go through the brackets and pick who we think will meet in the Super Bowl and who will win the Super Bowl. A little bit of a preview with the way we're hinting now, but who knows? Big stakes on the line this weekend, and we're looking forward to it. Um, any last words before we head over to the National Basketball Association? I didn't get just left. Johnny, just Johnny saying the Browns are going to make, are not going to make it, and I'm saying the Browns are for a giant slash hats wearing hat on the pod next week. Johnny, we'll head over to you with the National Basketball Association, and maybe more about my Boston Celtics. Fingers crossed. Do one last night. Uh, I'm going to go by. I'm going to go in the East West Conference standings. I'll give it. Please do. We'll talk town now for Johnny's basketball. Um, no, I'm going to go for the catch your name. With. For that Johnny's basketball listing segment. How's that? Yeah. Um, so starting off, we have the Magic first in the East at 4-0, which is pretty surprising if you ask me. They're led by Aaron Gordon, who's been playing pretty decent as of late. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what Markel Fultz has had a resurrection. Yes, I didn't think I didn't think he had it in him, but he's actually playing. Shot looks, the shot looks fixed, Johnny. Yeah. Then we have the Atlanta Hawks 3-0 in second place. Trey Young, uh, Clint Capella just got back from injury. Mm-hmm. Kelly Stornis. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Bogdanovich has been yeah, very true. unbelievable. That was such a crazy like whole situation thing. With, with his we, will, we will get into this. I won't, I won't interrupt now. You just read through the list. and Yeah, Cavs in third place at 3-1. and one. Um, I know Kevin loves her. I think he's going to be gone by the uh, trade deadline. I would be surprised if he's still on the team. Um, Pacers three and one. Sabonis has been playing on fire. Malcolm Brothers has been playing great. Um, Miles Turner is averaging like five blocks a game, like crazy, like that, which is pretty impressive. Then we have the Sixers at five, three and one. The Nets at six, two and two. Nets have been looking pretty good. KD looking like he hasn't even gotten hurt. Looking like uh, he didn't spend a year with a nor ACL. Mm-hmm. In the playoffs, people better get used to them in the playoffs. That's number seven is the New York Knicks, two and two. Woo! Great, led by Julius Randle as of late. He had a triple double last night. And then number eight below the New York Knicks, I just wanted to specify that, is the Celtics, uh, at two and two. Celtics have been playing, uh, could be playing a lot better. As We're in the playoffs, baby, through four games, only 68 left. <laughs> it's true, it's very true. And then in nine, I'll just outside the playoffs with the Bucks, and the Bucks have been playing, uh, I don't know what's going on with the Bucks. Giannis has not been playing as well as he could be as of late. Nope. And then at 10, we have the Hornets at 1 and 2. And they're pretty much led by who is uh, Melo, uh, Gordon Hayes. Harry Rozier. Harry Rozier, yeah, with that dunk on KD. I don't know who saw. He, he is a former Celtic. We let him go for Kemba, but uh, there you go. Kemba hasn't even played yet in my Celtics defense. When he comes back in January, blinders on, Lakers in the NBA Finals, here we go. Right, if you, if you say so. Uh, but in other news in the East, that's the top 10. Wizards are dead last at 0-4 after the Wall-Westbrook trade. Um, Raptors, Heat is also struggling. Jabs, um, Raptors haven't won a game. I watched the end of the Sixers game yesterday. You guys I, don't have a closer. You don't have a closer. Close game, and in, it's just Siakam throwing up bricks. It's just really bad basketball yeah, right now. Yeah, well, and I'm sure our fans from Canada will love that. I don't want to say that I, this was expected going to the season, but we weren't. I wasn't expecting to see the same team we had last year, clearly by the roster and um, by what I was expecting on the court and their success rate. Um, and that's just because they – we'll see. It's still very early to tell. Uh, it's still early to judge those uh, – the decisions made by the front office in the offseason. 
But yeah, definitely not the not the start we were expecting. We'll get more into the Raptors in a bit as we head to the Western Conference, Johnny. And first in the West, is- I mean. It's getting surprising. Like, you look at the East, if I were to tell you the top three teams after four games would be Orlando, Atlanta, and Cleveland, you must look at you like a fell or something. Yeah, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the top three teams in the East. Here, they all missed the playoffs. <laughs> but uh, moving to the Western Conference, first off, we have the Clippers at 3-1. and one. Their only loss being the 50-point blowout by the Mavericks. <laughs> Um, second place, you have the Phoenix Suns, three and one. Uh, Chris Paul, that Chris Paul uh, signing or trade, I can't remember what it was. They, they, they annihilated the Pelicans yesterday. That wasn't even a game. And and Chris Paul didn't even have ten points, and he's still. He, it's just it's, it's more than just the points of what he brings to the court, you know. I've been saying about the Ball Brothers for years. <laughs> Continue, Johnny. Keep going. Moving on to third, we have the Sacramento Kings at three and one in third place. They are led by uh, the Aaron and Buddy Heel as of late. Um, I don't really think anything's really going on with them. I haven't really heard any news about it. Uh, Utah Jazz two and one, Spurs two and one, Portland two and one. I think uh, all these teams. I think they're uh, Portland led by Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. I never really trusted CJ. Beat the Lakers the other night. They beat the Lakers again. Right? That brings in the seventh place team, which is the Lakers at two and two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then rounding up the playoffs is Pelicans eight and eight with uh, Zion. I'm expecting big things from Zion this year, man. Very big things. Yeah, I've picked them to win the MVP. And then at ninth, we have the Warriors, which I honestly, I was expecting the Warriors to be a lot better than they have been so far. I was expecting them to be undefeated to start off, but I guess that Clay Thompson injury is um, yeah. more. Uh, there's more damage than uh, I expected. And then rounding up the top 10 is the Timberwolves at 2-2 two and two with the new addition of D'Angelo Russell playing pretty decent for them, along with uh, Carl Anthony Towns. And then outside the top 10, the uh, I'd say the biggest thing is the Nuggets being dead last at 0-2. Um, you know, who knows how much longer James Harden is in that team. Um, John Wall, I think, actually, I think John Wall's making his debut tonight, or the 30th, I don't know when this will air, but tonight. He's going to add an element. To the the rock. Yeah, I'm excited to see how he's going to play. And then just above them at 14 is the Nuggets, one and three, who Jokic is playing on fire, but he's for some reason it can, has not turned into wins. As of- Half of my predictions are right. I said Jokic is going to be top three in MVP voting, and I said the Nuggets are going to be the one seed, and now they're in 14th place in the Western Conference. So it's only four games, like you said. You know, like the yeah. Knicks are in the playoffs. They're crying out loud. I suppose it's only been four games. That's why it's still it's still very early. I think it's going to change a lot more. I don't like a Magic Hawk cast, like they're not they're not gonna be there top three. That's ridiculous. All right. That's so I, I want to talk about the Phoenix Suns. And they absolutely annihilated, annihilated the New Orleans Pelicans last night. And the game got closer at the end, still a blowout, but the only reason it was close is because at the end, like the Pelicans stopped playing defense and then the Pelicans hit a few late threes, you know, close the gap a bit. Still. It was a. It was still 111, the 86. So that's still a mopping. And you look. I can't believe about the resurrection of Jay Crowder. He's playing unbelievable. Where was he in Boston like this? And LeBron's gonna ask, where were you in Cleveland? Jay Crowder is one of those players where he's hot and then he's real cold. He led the Suns in scoring last night, 21 points. Aiton had 13. Miles Bridges had 13. You know, Chris Paul was had nine. He only took four shots, too. Yeah. He shot decent from the floor. Uh, he had nine assists, though. Can't forget about that. Plus 19 from the field. Zion led the Pelicans with 20 points. Ingram had 13. Lonzo Ball had seven and one. Uh, but it was all around. You can't really judge the Pelicans on that. You can't really judge the Pelicans on that game. No one showed up. I mean, that was just a game. That's just one of those games. And even you look at the Clippers had one on. Sunday, where Kawhi was out and Paul George was awful. Everyone was awful. It was, what, 72-22 at halftime? Was that it? Something like that, yeah. 77-27. Yeah, something like that. It was ridiculous. So, we, it's early in the year. They have these games like this. Johnny, who, have, you've been mightily impressed with the Sun so far, right? Yeah, I have been impressed with the Sun so far. Like I said, I think they're 3-1 and one right now. Yep. Yeah, you know, Chris Paul's been playing great. Devin Booker's been playing great. 
I see how the other guys, you know, now I think the Suns are finally starting to get out of the rebuild. You know, they've been down for so long. Now they got Bridges, they got Aiden, they got uh, Booker. Now I think they're finally, you know, slowly making that climb back to uh, relevancy. I mean, it all started with the bubble. They went eight and in the bubble, and I think making missing the playoffs was the best thing for them. Because would they have beaten the Lakers? No, they wouldn't. No chance. So I think it was good for them to go 8-0 and in the bubble and not play a good team. And their confidence is going to be sky high entering the year. And look, they're 3-1, and first in the West. I know it's been through four games, but they look like a team. It's not like Houston when Harden's going 44-16. and right. You know, it's, it's 20 from Crowder, 15 from Aiton, 15 from Bridges. You know, like seven assists from Chris Paul. It's everyone's getting involved. And right now, I think they could be a top five team in the West or now even look maybe even top four team. They can host the playoff series right now. And they look very formidable. They match up. Obviously, when the Lakers get going and the Clippers get going, those are going to be, I still think, Denver. Um, But, like, when those teams get going before the playoffs, they're going to be tough. But there's no reason why the Suns can't be a top four team in the West this year, John. One of the things I like about the Suns is that they use all their bench. You know, even they, mm-hmm. obviously, obviously they play against Pelicans, they soften them around, they use their bench. But like when they play against Dallas, they use, I think, 12 guys, 12, 13 guys. They spread their bench out, you know, they separate, they spread the minutes around. I don't like when teams do that. I don't like seeing, you know, guys, two guys running seven, seven man sets. It's, it doesn't work. You need to have that variation. You need to give guys a break, you know, especially on young teams like Phoenix. Absolutely. But I love Phoenix. If I'm, I'm looking through the West right now. The Lakers, when they lost to Portland the other night, um, that's just – we know they have two of the top five best players in the league in LeBron and Anthony Davis. But besides that, are they a better team than last year or are they a worse team than last year? Because you look last night, the starters – LeBron did his thing. LeBron was 29, 9, and 6. That will work. Uh, that's a LeBron stat line. Anthony Davis had a lackluster game, only 13, 10, and 5. But Schroeder had 24, 4, and 4. Besides that, I mean, Kyle Kuzma had 6 points, no rebounds, no assists on 2 and 9 shooting, had played 23 minutes. That's not going to work. Yeah, so this might be a hot take, but I think that Kuzma is going to be gone by the trade deadline if he continues playing the way he is. Wow. I think that he will be traded for, I don't know, probably maybe a better guard that, that they could use because right now they just really have Schroeder. Get Rondo back? <laughs> no, I don't know. Just for the playoffs, maybe. But, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's going to be packaged in for, uh, I don't know who. I, I would have to do some research into that, but I don't think he's going to be on the team much longer. He's just, he's not fitting. He, when, he, when he gets minutes, he's not performing um yeah i think he's gonna be gone who do we who would who's the ideal guard if you said at the pick like a realistic guard you can't say i want Kyrie, i want curry like who's the guard you think in a trade for kuzma and some assets that could come to the lakers and make an impact because schroeder is more i see like he can get his but he's more of a guy who can run the second unit along playing alongside guys of like harrell and Gasol that's more of his role I see so what do you who do you think is an ideal guard a realistic ideal guard the Lakers can get for maybe a Kyle Kuzma and some assets that can really help LeBron and Davis make a run honestly at the top of my head all I can really think of is uh, uh Malcolm Brogdon I think, oh. I think he's a solid he's a solid defensive player he can shoot the ball um, and, you know, he's not going to – he doesn't need the ball in his hands to perform. You know, he plays good defense. He moves, he moves well off ball. He makes good, such good greens. I think he – I think he – if it's just – I haven't looked into anything yet, so I don't really know, but I think he's the first guy I can think of that would be a solid fit for the Lakers, and maybe they can give it to Kuzma. Uh, they might need more than that, but who knows. Do you think Indiana will let Brogdon go, though? That's the thing. I don't, I don't know. If I'm Indiana, I'm not. But then again – It's got to be Kuzma and, like, a one – and, you know, also another guy, uh, Van Fleet, maybe, if they can trade for him. They just did sign up for that big contract, but. Here my mind just went, what about Lowry? Well, that would be even better. 
That would be even better. For but it's, if I'm not, and I'm not saying Toronto is going to go. As you look at Toronto last night, they lost to the 76ers, um, 100 to 93, and they led much of that fourth quarter, and they just let the game slip away. If Toronto continues now on this downward, you know, I don't even know what to call it right now. It's not a good start. Um, should they just clean house with the veterans like Kyle Lowry? Um, you know they're going to keep Siakam. You know they're going to keep OG. But, you know, Van Leet, do you let him go? Do you let, like, an Aaron Baines go? Do you let these guys who are not essential to your future go pick up assets and let Masai Ujiri do his thing like he did to build that championship team a few years ago? My, my guess would be that this year is going to tell them what they're going to do. You know, depending on how well they play this year with the team they have now, but aside whether they, you know, go all in on rebuild, rebuilding or keep their vets and try and make a push for a win now, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that should, what they should be doing is trading Lowry, trading Siakam, and just building around, I don't know, OG and Van Fleet, but we'll see. But you look, Lowry looked great last night. 24, 8, and 9. Yeah, that to the Lakers. I'm not saying he's going to get that many points. He's only getting older. That's the thing about Lowry. Well, yeah, I'm, not, I'm saying if you can – they'll take Kuzma. They, Toronto will take Kuzma. They need young guys if they want to push this team forward. You know, if you put in a few draft picks in there, sweeten up the pot, you know, I think Lowry could work. Like, he, if he gives you – any, the one thing, he's probably the best – he's probably the best stealer of the basketball in the NBA. Like, he gets steals all the time. He does gets, those, like, the hustle stats, you know? And he gets charges. I don't know how many charges he's got. I mean, he'd be – I think he'd be perfect – for the Lakers, like perfect for the Lakers. And honestly, I didn't think of him coming, but now that you said his name, I, I'm getting more, like, uh, I agree with that more and more. But it's going to be like, I think Brogdon's going to go for less than Lowry. That's the thing, though, because Brogdon's younger, and you could argue he's almost more valuable than Lowry at this moment right now, you know? But I, I think I would prefer Lowry, having Lowry. I think they would get him for cheaper. Honestly, I think that they would than uh, um, Brogdon, but... You're probably right. You're probably right. But what they'll probably end up doing is running LeBron at point guard and just keeping Kuzma anyway, but we'll see. But I think okay, the last thing before we go here on the Tom Jump to talk about the NBA is we look at, like, there's a lot of surprising things going on in the National Basketball Association. And I say the most surprising, Johnny, is Golden State started off 0-2 getting blown out at Brooklyn and at Milwaukee. That's a tough start. I mean, you go, you play Durant and Kyrie, you get blown out next night. Yeah, you got to play Giannis, Holiday, and Middleton. They've won two in a row since, and Steph Curry has looked phenomenal. Steph Curry led them last night. He had 31 points of 9 of 17 shooting. He was 5 of 9 from 3, like he always is, just money. They take down the Pistons. 11, 116 to 106. I know it's the Pistons, and they basically almost had Leandro Ball on their team. But is Golden State around the corner now? They let those first two games go. Oubre and Curry, are they starting to gel more? Wiseman's looking fantastic. Might be the rookie of the year favorite right now. Although Anthony Edwards has looked very good too. Um, it's look, Golden State looks great. Like the last two games, they won by the – Skin of their teeth at Chicago, but I think that was the wake-up call. And Andrew Wiggins, 27-7-3 and three last night. And Uber shot 60% from the floor. They look like a far better basketball team. Yeah, Uber hit his first three, I believe. He went one free team, finally. I know. I'm not saying they're going to – I said they were going to be a playoff team. I know they played Brooklyn. Uh, then they played Brooklyn, Milwaukee, and then they had Chicago, Detroit. But still, they looked like a far better basketball team yesterday, Johnny. And I was very impressed with Andrew Wiggins, of all people, the Canadian legend. Well, I he should have the nickname Maple Mamba, Maple but they gave that one to me. But I, I agree with you, Tom. I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think it's just going to take them a while to get back into the groove of things, you know? What do you think? Who have uh, you been happy with for Golden State? Like, no, I know you don't like Golden State, but like, who have you been surprised with? I've been, I've been wise. I think they, they needed a good center for so long. That's like the one thing for all the championship teams, the one thing they never had was a good center, you know? 
and now they finally have her. They had to go small with Draymond playing a lot at center. Right, and that's what, arguably that's what killed them in 2016 is because they had no good center, and, and Draymond got uh, suspended. LeBron was able to just dominate the paint. Absolutely. So uh, we like what Golden State's done, and we run through the rest of the scores last night. The Celtics beating the Indiana Pacers 116-111, like you said, Johnny. Chicago finally, finally got their first win against the Westbrook. Let's talk about this quickly. Westbrook had a triple-double last night and lost again. That's the Chicago of all teams. He had a 21, 15, and 11. Everyone sees that stat line and freak out, but they lose the game. The, the story of Russell Westbrook's whole career is, oh, he got a triple-double, but he lost. That's been his career, and I, I'm not surprised at this moment. You know, I, I expected it. I, I don't think Washington is that good a team. Bradley Beal is a star, though. Yeah, that, I think they should have rebuilt it around Bradley Beal instead of trading for Westbrook, but, you know, what do I know, I guess. Um, uh, they just they don't have anything else. You know, it's, it's hard to fault. Westbrook and Beal both played well. It's just there's no one else on that team, you know, and my computer keeps falling down. Sorry about that. All good, Johnny. But, like, what is – this is what we've been saying. I'm not hating on Russell Westbrook, but I have a little – I have a – like a mini game to play here. I'm just going to list off some guys, and you tell me if you rather have Westbrook on your team or you rather have this guy, Gap. You can do this, too. Okay. Are they the same would you rather are they have – who would you rather – what's that? So are they going to be the same position or what? Or is it going to be – up to you. You want to do the same position? Yeah, let's keep the same position because then it gets complicated. But. Kyle Lowry or Russell Westbrook to win a game? Depends from where. Uh, Westbrook, Westbrook, Westbrook. But, like, but you see, I just said Kyle Lowry, and you thought about it. But why, if you look at the stat lines, you see Westbrook stat pads like crazy. I've been saying it's empty calories, empty calorie stats. Sure, and they he are. doesn't have any help. The guy he needs this. It's Bradley Beal. Well, now, okay, for the, for the first time in his career, he's got somebody who's not a selfish Johnny, ball. Johnny, he had Harden, he had Durant. Selfish ball hog. Selfish ball hog. That's all I'm saying, man. I, I don't even like Westbrook that much. I'm just trying to, trying to defend him, you know? His MVP no else here, everyone knew what was going to happen. They knew Durant left. He was going to have the ball and going to get 30, 10, and 10. Everyone knew what was going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's... And you knew this was going to happen, too, in Washington. When it's just him and Bradley Beal, you know he's going to get his. I, I guess, yeah, that, does, that is accurate. Um, I'm not trying to crap on Westbrook, but, like, when I hear people compare Westbrook to Curry, I'm like, no. Well, three years ago, I think you could make that argument. No, even then, that was blasphemous. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit harsh on Westbrook. All right, <laughs> if you want other – you want other uh, point guards? Would you rather have D'Angelo Russell or Russell Westbrook? Russell Westbrook. That's for sure. I don't trust D'Angelo. All I'm right. Just, just Jamal, Jamal Murray. Uh, Jamal Murray. I'd rather have Jamal Murray. Canadian. That's the only reason, right? No, I think he's younger. He's playing better. I like him. Okay, what about De'Aaron Fox? I like De'Aaron Fox, too. It's because without Westbrook's getting to that point where he's going to start declining, you know? So I'm, I, when you give me those younger guys, I, I like the younger ones. Lonzo Ball. Westbrook. I'm taking Lonzo. <laughs> <laughs> he is so undervalued, and it's not even funny. He didn't have a great game yesterday, but no one on the Pelicans did. But he's had 16 twice this year. He's, he's a top five passer in the league. I just – I don't see how you can be a modern basketball player if you don't have a three-point jump shot. I still but he's it. hitting them sometimes. He hits the – The operative word is sometimes. That's the operative word here, sometimes. You're going to see. He's going to get on a streak like he did last year when he drops 25, like, five games in a row. Good. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't I take – I like that he's driving more. He used to just only shoot threes. Now he's developed a mid-range game. He's driving. He's still – I want him to be a bit more aggressive sometimes, but – all in all, I think Alonzo Ball has been much better this year, and I feel like he'll continue to grow. I see him, Johnny, he's like a Jason Kidd. He's going to get like eight, eight, all, uh, comparison. 18 points, you know, eight, eight, you know, maybe six to, eight to nine. What's that? 
That's an 8 to 11 assist a game. Yeah, and he can get like seven rebounds. He's a very good rebounding guard. For sure. I love Lonzo Ball. And I'm not crapping on Westbrook here. I'm just saying he's not – you can't win a championship. Mm-hmm. He's just not – like if he was on the Lakers, that would be a disaster. A disaster. Brutal. You put him on the Clippers, it's a disaster. Look at Houston last year. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah for sure. Like that. Because that's the thing. Westbrook needs, like, a dominant shooter to play with. And if he doesn't have that, it's just not going to work because it's going to be him taking all the shots, right? It's like he wanted – at the end of Oklahoma City, it's like he thought he was the guy. And everyone's like, Durant's like, nah, fam, it's me. And obviously it was Durant. And Durant's like, hell with this guy. I can't play with this guy anymore. You know, so. And I I thought – I don't know why the hell he wanted out of Houston. I would have stayed there. Forever, man. Are you kidding me? Being a duo with James Harden, what more is it I want? What more could you want? But what do you know, eh? Yes, man. What, what the hell do I know? All right. So we're looking forward to what's coming along in the NBA. Johnny, do you have any hot takes for this week in the NBA before we meet up again? Uh, I don't believe anything too, too hot. Um, I'm going to say what do over the stretch. Sorry? How do your Knicks do over this week stretch? Um, uh, 500. That's what I'm going to say. Maybe a game or two below. I don't know how many games they're playing this week. I think three. I could be wrong, though. You got, you got the Raptors on New Year's Eve. And you got the Pacers and the Hawks before we meet again. So you got Toronto, Indiana, and Atlanta. Toronto, Indiana, and Atlanta. I think we can go 21 against those teams. All right. Then again, we are the Knicks, so probably go low in three. But and Gav, uh, we'll look at your Raptors. Your Raptors obviously have the Knicks, New Orleans, and Boston, and then Phoenix. I that is a win. stretch. That is a bad stretch of basketball. I think they, if they get one win out of that stretch, that'll be that'll be good. If we can get one win. One and three, that would put you at what? One and six? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you want to win as many as possible. But I think looking at it right now, I think they're not, ex- they're expected to get probably one win out of that against Johnny's Knicks. No offense. Wow, okay. I think they should put, put something game. on it. Put a bet on it. Looking at it right now and hearing what you guys have had to say and just past things on the Knicks, I think we can get a win. Off out of New York on New Year's Eve, definitely, or New Year's Day. Um, but it's going to be a tough – it's going to be a tall drink of water, all the other ones. It's going to be a tough – cuff. excuse me. Uh, it's going to be a tough order. And, uh, yeah, if you want to put a bet on it, I'll put a bet on it. Getting what? Who wins, Raptors or, or mix? Yeah, I'm down. Yep, they play on New Year's Eve, so tomorrow. Um, uh, on sports. Yeah. Yanni, what do you want to, what do you want to put on it? I'm down, but yeah, that's, I don't know. What are you, what are you that's trying to uh, – because we're not polarly opposed as, you know. Tom. No, it's not like we hate – we don't hate each other. Yeah. We have a very – it's not like, oh, if I have to wear a Giants hat and you have to wear a Jets no, hat, you know. No, oh, like, heaven you forbid. No. Um, I have to give a monologue in French on sports. I have to give a monologue. Okay, that's what we'll do. Gav, Gav will have to talk about the Jets in French. Okay. <laughs> Like, and, right and, now, and, then, and if the Knicks win, then Johnny's got to talk about the Giants in French. No, they're, or, they're, or the Knicks and Raptors. Okay, well, no, okay. The well, loser has to give a full synopsis of the game in French or okay, yeah. oh, no, in a language of the winner's choosing. Okay, let's not, let's not get too crazy with the languages, though. Rush, I'm going to give Johnny a rush. No, you have to do Icelandic. Icelandic is the toughest language in the world. Okay, okay, I'm down for that. Icelandic or French? Because French people can understand, or we can do the hardest language in the world. I say you do French. Okay, French. I say do French, too, because then we can know what the hell we're saying. You know? Yeah, bonjour. The French audience yeah. is just going to laugh. We don't need something oh, yeah. at, at our yes. English education. Johnny uh, and I are very low French. Oh, my maybe, low. uh... My French is not good at all, man. Maybe Legault is going to kick us out of the province after he watches this. Would that be the worst thing? Oh. Would that be the worst thing? No. <laughs> the loser does... Synopsis in French. All right. So I want to thank everyone for watching the Tommy John Show. Remember to, Johnny, like always, subscribe.
And we want your questions to be answered. So if you have any questions or any topics you want us to cover, we will cover them. That's what the Tommy John Show is all about. I want to thank our head commentator, Gruesome Gavin Delaney, my co-host, Johnny Mishaws, you guys, the, the, the viewers, we want to thank you. And spread the word about the Tommy John Show. So I am Tommy Lane. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with a preview of the NFL postseason. Thank you, guys. Happy New Year. God bless. Thank you, guys.